We are joined now by a passenger on that train. Paul Chung works for the Associated Press. He had his camera with him. Uh, fortunately, he's uninjured. There's a couple of bumps and bruises, but that's it. Mr. Chung, welcome to Good Day. Thanks for being Thank here. Where were you sitting at, uh, on the train? I was at the um, third car from the back. So it was the car that was perpendicular to um, the rails. Uh, you know, a Thank lot of goodness it wasn't one of the cars that, you know, toppled over. Yeah, it was surprisingly shocking because a lot of people were asking, did I feel the speed? You know, to tell you the truth, I didn't feel anything. It seems normal and then suddenly, you know, everything blacked out in the, in the train and you could see a lot of vibration. And I sensed that I was moving, but I didn't think we were derailing so far, I just thought we crashed into something. Mm. And you know, it, it happened in a, such a split second. And suddenly, when everything stopped, people were just looking for this stuff. I was looking for my phone and collecting my belongings, and so was everyone else. So you thought about that, let me grab my stuff and get off this train. Yeah, you know, and, you know, and just looking around, I could only see a few passengers, and they all seemed to be gathering this stuff. And suddenly, I heard a voice from, from behind me saying that, you know, you got to get out now, get out from the back. And, you know, I was confused. I thought, oh, maybe that's someone from Amtrak. But it was a different passenger who told us that we need to get out from the back. And at that point, you know, I start smelling smoke in the car. Mm. And that's when I knew, like, oh, I really need to get out now. You took some of these pictures we're looking at right yes. here? Yes. Uh, by the way, were you knocked out of your seat at all? No, I just, you know, I kind of curl up into a ball and just let the momentum you know, carry me a bit, so, you know, so fortunately I wasn't, I know. you know, bang around like the other person. But you must have seen a lot of horrific things while you were there, right? Did you know, you like, covering the news, we see a lot of horrific things, right. so, you know. So it's almost surreal to you, It I was guess. very surreal. I mean, when I jump off the train, that's when I really got a sense of how devastated the, the wreckage was. It's almost like a scene from a movie, you know, where I got off and I see some trains were flip over to the side and I see passenger crawling from the window up, escaping, and I ran toward that area and suddenly I saw sparks at the train and then I ran the other way because, you know, I thought something might happen to blow up and people were just kind of yelling all over the place, say, get off the track, get off the track, there might be live wires. And somebody was just like, help, you know, help this person get out, you know, stop. Did you help a little bit too? I was just basically looking around to see if people were okay. A lot of people were asking to borrow my phone so that they could call their family and loved one. It must have been pretty wild. It's dark. There's just been this crash. Mm -hmm. And there's really, a, in the initial moments, nobody really directing anybody around. You're on your own. Yeah, I was completely disoriented. I have no idea where I was. I have, you know, the minute I jump off the train, I just hear people yelling you know, at me saying that, are you okay, are you okay, get off the track, you know, and then I'm just kind of running all over the place. You know, I have to say within minutes, it feels like all the first transponders suddenly descending. Hmm. How did you finally get out of there? When did things get organized and, and how were you let out of there? Well, the first responder kind of came through and they start evacuating everyone into um, Frankfurt Avenue and they set up a makeshift area there where they start you know, interviewing passengers and asking, you know, about the injury, where they're from, and they start tagging people with these giant cards with like one, two, and three, hmm. and, um, you know, I guess they're based on severity of injury, and, you know, as the night passes, you see more and more first transponder coming in, and that's when I have the opportunity to, you know, call my news desk and make sure they knew there was an accident. Um, and I start, you know, taking some of the first pictures and shot some of the short, you know, videos. Paul, I, I know you've had some time to digest this. And what plays through your mind when you go to sleep at night? You must say, boy, oh boy, am I a lucky person here. Definitely. I mean, you know, normally I like to sit at the cop before the cafe or after the cafe. But, you know, that day I was just being lazy. I'm just like, oh, I don't really want to walk toward the middle or the front. You know, I just want to sit toward the back and you know it just be played the decisions that you make you know could really affect you every day wow well paul thank you uh, very much for joining us and the images went global by the way and they were very powerful um, well done what else do you do with the associated press um, i'm their multimedia editor so i manage a team that put together um, digital stories for online and web and mobile and well we're glad that you're okay
And finally, your thoughts as you hear that the train might have been going more than twice the speed limit, 106 miles per hour. I know you couldn't sense that, but mm. it looks like a very serious mistake may have been made. I mean, right now, I just want to just know the truth. Mm. You know, why did it happen the way it happened? And, you know, just want to get to the bottom of it. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right, 742. Good day, New York. So we'll take a quick break. Okay, be right back.